Hi everyone, welcome to Shelf Control. I'm Norm. I'm Lisa. And today we're going to talk about Firefly the board game. Take my love, take my land. This was one of the eight randoms that got pulled. And this was the one that I think Lisa was looking forward to. Yep. Norm said he had played it years ago, wasn't super thrilled with it. Him and a group of his friends played it and he said it took too long, he wasn't interested. Um, we had a couple comments on our random um, video and people were saying how much they liked Firefly and enjoyed the expansions and so I was looking forward to playing it. We're huge fans of the show. Um, so I was ready to play it. Norm was going to play it again, but he wasn't overly thrilled with it. Your hat! I didn't want people to think that I was biased. It's a manly hat. It's a cunning hat. A man walks down the street in that hat, people know he's not afraid of anything. Firefly, <clears throat> the game is find a crew, find a job, keep flying. So... It's enough. You're going to, uh, you're going to start out just picking a ship, and in the base game, all the ships are the same. They just have a different color and a different, different name. Uh, the Serenity is is the orange player. Uh, Bonanza is the green player. Yonki is yellow. Is yellow. I and apologize the, uh, if I've said it wrong. There's the Bonnie May, which is which is blue. But functionally, all these ships are the same. Mm -hmm. And then it holds the same amount of cargo, same amount of stash, can hold the same amount crew. of crew and slots for ship upgrades. And then you'll, <clears throat> you'll pick uh, a captain. And so what, what you'll do is you actually like will roll a die. Whoever's the starting player will get to pick their ship and their, their captain. Mm. And so uh, when we were playing with David, he picked Serenity with, with Malcolm Reynolds. And I ended up with Bonanza and uh, Marco. Polo. I chose Nandy. So she was, uh, she's a companion. She has a, I don't want to say brothel, but she has an yes, establishment. She, she runs an establishment. On a border planet, I believe. And so each, each captain has different symbols. There's three symbols in the game. There's the uh, guns, which what, what are they? We, we call them the wrong things. So uh, there's fight, the guns, tech with the wrenches, and negotiate with the uh, with the little green word bubbles. Which we call talky talk. So yeah, we got shooty shoot and talky talk and Techie tech. I, I, think, I think I just keep calling this gears, even though it's a wrench. You call on it, it gears, but you occasionally so I, say talk, uh, techie tech. So yeah, so we got the the shooty shoot, the talky talk, and the techie tech, or fight tech and negotiate. That's how we roll. And so uh, this guy happens to have two uh, two shooty shoots and a gear, and so he's so uh, two fights and a tech. And he also has a keyword. <clears throat> There's keywords in green. That is a transport. So there's some jobs that are going to require you to have a transport. And so he doesn't need to find any gear to uh, to try and get that transport. He has it on his own. And Nandy just has the two negotiate and then one fight. So that's what she starts with. And she's a companion. You need to have to do some jobs. You get bonuses if you have companions. But she doesn't have any, um, like, specials as far as like a transport things like that so she doesn't have any bonus there that helps her but she gets a bonus just by being a companion you'll start your ship your captain six fuel two parts and three thousand space credits and you get to start your ship on any space on the board that that you want that's not occupied by uh, another firefly and so Starting out with just your captain and your ship, then you start building up. Uh, you'll get uh, one of each job drawn to you, but you can only hold three, so you'll discard some of those. And those are your starting jobs where it's like, okay, uh, 
if I if I can accomplish this without without a crew or do I need to get my hands on a crew? You can have three active jobs and three jobs in your hand. So if you want to take more jobs from a location, you can. You just have to discard down to three holding. But again, you can always have three active. And once it's active, it's out. You can't get rid of it unless you complete it. So on your turn, you can do two unique actions. Out of, Watch the alliance ship. Out of, out of four choices. I don't want to destroy the alliance ship. So the, the, the first action that you can take <clears throat> is fly. And so you've got two ways you can fly. You can do a full burn, which is based off of your drive core. Uh, all the starting drive cores have a number five and says one fuel to initiate the full burn. So again, Norm said you start out with six fuel, so you'll turn one in to do a full burn on your turn. And you can move up to the number of spaces that your drive core says, which in this case is five. And so you would move one space, two space, three space, four space, up to five. But because but. You're, you're traveling quickly, every space that you move into You've got border space and you've got alliance space. If you move into a border space, you have to flip the border space card. And that's kind of where, well, that's where the Reavers are. So they fly around. And most of them will say, keep flying. They'll just be a blank card that says, keep flying. And in which and case, you, just, you move your next you turn. You move on to the next space. So let's say I moved into another border space. And you draw that's... another one. So this one is. Um, it's a breakdown. So you would roll based on your um, tech. And uh, one to four, you lose two fuel, and it's a full stop. If you get a five plus, you keep flying. So the so, way those work, so you have a six-sided die where the six is replaced with the firefly. And you would add up all the gears that, that you have available. In this case, I only have one techs not gears and so i need you uh, need a five plus to keep flying so but if you roll a one to four you have to discard two fuel and then you stop so it doesn't matter if you've only moved one of your five if you get a full stop you're done so the way it works you add up all all your symbols for that and you roll a die and then you add that together in this case i got a four so he would lose two fuel and, and he would stop. have a full stop i would have to stop right there the card also gives you another option. So usually there's two options. The second option is just spend one part and keep flying. So you start the game with two parts. If you want to discard one of those to keep flying, you can, and you get to take your next move. But if you um, don't have any parts, then you have to do this top challenge instead. And there is a way that you can pass every test. <clears throat> Because yep, so that, even if you don't firefly, have any tech. If you roll a six, you add that six and you get to re-roll and go again. So it would get an eight since he, so drew, he rolled a two. If I rolled a two. six and then a two, that would be eight even if I didn't have any of the, the tech. So he'd have been successful and would have been <clears> able to keep flying. So it's it's rare, but it, it has what uh, other games call an exploding die. If you roll the highest value... You get to roll again and, and add it. So there is a chance, even if you don't have any of the symbols, and no matter how high the requirement is, there's a possibility you can keep rolling sixes and, and, and meet it. Yep. And that way, if you don't have a crew yet, or you have crew that don't have any of those symbols, there's still an opportunity for you to be able to progress in that or succeed in that challenge or whatever that test may be. And as long as the card says keep flying, you can move on. So if I move into the alliance space, I then have to go from the alliance space. From Each deck has one card in it that says reshuffle the deck at the bottom. And both of these cards call the respective ship into your area. This one would call the Reavers. This one would call the alliance ship. I can't reach the Reavers. So you, My arms aren't long enough. So if you, if you draw this alliance cruiser card... It moves into your space, and then 
you get messed with by the Alliance. Uh, it's not a big deal if you're not uh, wanted. If you don't have a warrant out for you or you're wanted, that's when it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. But if, if you're clean crew for the moment, you're okay. Even if you have something in your stash... Yes, yeah, you have to have an active warrant or uh, or the wanted crew. It turns you into an outlaw ship. But uh, so this this can can be a real pain. And some of your starting or some of the the crew from the actual show do start wanted. So you can potentially hire them. They're in some of these bigger cities. That if you happen to draw the card, you can hire them. And we'll get to that in a second. But, you know, like River and Simon, they're both wanted, of course. Um, Jane, Jane has a warrant out for him, or he's wanted. And down at the bottom, <clears throat> it would say if, they, if they're wanted or not. So you want to keep that in mind, too, because if you get caught by the Alliance and you have a wanted crew member, um, you roll a dice. And if the die, it, it's a certain number, you lose that crew member. But otherwise, you keep them, but you have, a pay, you have to pay $1,000. For that warrant yeah you have to pay a thousand dollars for every warrant for everyone yep if you roll a die if you roll a one then you remove that character from the game they get hauled off to jail so the the second option for moving is you can just mosey which means you just move one space it doesn't take any fuel and you don't flip a card but you've only moved one space so it's going to take you a while to get from one end of the board to the other if you're just moseying. But, but it's, it's very safe. <laughs> it's the safe way to do it. The next thing you can do is buy. So if you happen to be in, in a spot that has uh, the names shown on these decks, like Silverhold, Space Bazaar, Persephone, uh, Regina, they have a deck of cards that has gear that your uh, characters Tech. can hold. And you have new crew that you can hire and it has ship upgrades mm -hmm. that, that can go onto your ship and at the beginning of the game you uh, do what they call priming the pump you'll discard the top three cards into the discard pile and when you go to buy from an area let's say i was in the space bazaar i can look at the the discard pile in the space bazaar at any time and so in this case i have an explosive charge a gun hand and jesse and so I can look at these and I might be like, you know what? I could use a pilot. I don't have somebody with the pilot keyword. So I'm going to consider her, but you're allowed to consider three cards. So if I don't consider all three of these, I can draw the other two from the top of this deck to consider these three. And now I have a scrapper and I have a security interface pad, which has the hacking rig keyword on it which can come in handy and so out of these three i can buy up to two of them i can't buy all three so i might want the security interface pad and jesse but that's going to be <clears throat> 1200 of my starting 3000 but whoever i don't buy goes into the discard pile for the next person who who decides to go there and something cool about my captain nandy is she can hire crew at no cost so i can take two um, crew members out of that selection and not have to pay anything for them. So that's pretty cool. And so I can put my, uh, my new pilot over my crew area, just set my gear off to the side. Nobody is assigned gear until they're working a job. So this security interface pad could be used by anybody when the, when the time comes. And uh, so uh, <clears throat> the other thing you can do with the buy action is if any of your crew are dis disgruntled, which can be a bad thing, instead of buying, you can send your crew out for, uh, uh, what do they call it? It's, uh, it's like it's leave. Land. Shore leave. Shore leave. <clears throat> and so you pay $100 per crew member, whether they're disgruntled or not, because you're sending them all out to party. You don't pay for your captain, but you do for all the crew you have. And it'll it'll remove the disgruntled from all the everyone on your crew, so including your captain. So they they don't have that danger of possibly uh, possibly leaving. Because if, you, if yeah, if you get too disgruntled on a crew member, they leave. You lose them. So they they're not in your crew anymore. 
And you also have the risk of if another firefly moves into the same space as you and you have a disgruntled employee, so one with just one disgruntled, they can hire them. They can persuade them to come. So they would just automatically pay the price of that um, worker, crew member, and they take them from you. Yeah, so come over here and it would remove the disgruntled because you made a better offer. Yep. So <clears throat> your captain can't leave the ship. And he can't be killed. He's he's the one uh, one guy who's safe and doesn't get removed. But if he gets a, if he would get killed, he gets a disgruntled token. And if he gets two, well, then he gets upset and he fires the whole crew. So you don't want you don't want your captain to get double disgruntled. <laughs> the third thing you can do is deal. So if you're in a spot with one of these. Five characters. You got Amundul, Badger, Harkin, Patience, and Niska. And their name is out on the board. So they're <laughs> they they are in particular spots. Uh, Harkin is on the Alliance cruiser wherever that happens to be, but everyone else has an assigned spot. And it's the same thing, kind of as buying. If there's anything in the discard pile, you can look at that first because you're you're they're offering you jobs, and so this is like the bulletin board of things that they want you to do. And again, you can pick as many as you want out of the, the discard pile, up to three, and then draw the remainder from the deck. And remember, your hand size is three, so you have to discard down to three. So if I had, if I had one already, I could consider three jobs, and now I would have to choose one to discard. Probably this one that needs a lot of talky talk because my and my... you can discard the one from your hand, not necessarily the ones you're yeah. considering. And so then I have these jobs in my hand, and I can choose to to try and work them in in the future. Uh, also, if you're in the area and you are what they call solid with the person, they have a thing <clears throat> up at the top that tells you what they will buy. Contraband and cargo for. And so you, you, when you're dealing with them, you can actually sell some of your cargo or contraband at the same same time as part of the deal action. And you become solid with them by completing one of their jobs. So as soon as you complete a job, you're solid with them. And the benefit to being solid with Harkin is if you happen to be in the same spot as the Alliance ship, you can buy fuel from the Alliance ship for $100. Um, a fuel, which is the same price as if you were to buy fuel in another one of the planets, but you can buy it from him in out in space somewhere. I forgot to mention that. When you're taking the buy action, buying gear and guys, uh, you can actually buy fuel for $100, parts for $300 each. So if you need to refuel or get some parts because you had some breakdowns out there, you can replenish them that way. So after you get the, the jobs, after you've dealt with these people... Then the other action you can do is work. And the jobs will have, uh, let's see, do I have, I have one here that's, that's different. So this one is a task that all I need to do is go to this one location and do whatever, whatever it says. So in this case, I need to go to Ariel in, the, in White Sun, which is up here. So once I move up here, as an action, I can say I'm going to work this job and it will go into the active job section and then uh, you do whatever it says. It, I need to have the talky talk and I get paid $400 plus $400 for each talking symbol on the job. And if I have a companion, I get a plus 500 bonus. And then, so I just go here, I say I'm working this job, I get paid. And now you flip it over and tuck it in here to show that I am now solid with Amon Duel. Other jobs <clears throat> might have two parts to it. So this is a transport, uh, and this one's shipping. So one is picking up people, one is picking up cargo. So in this case, in order to start it, I need to go to Red Sun uh, Harvest, which is way, way down there. And then when I take my work action, I show this and I load two cargo. So I put two cargo on my ship, but the job's not done until I do the second half, 
I need to drop it off in Lodinium in White Sun in the middle of the map. And so <clears throat> I need to get over here and deliver two cargo in order to get paid. So it also has a companion bonus, but it's $1,300 plus $500 if I have a companion. And so <clears throat> this would get completed and... Uh, you don't need to have both showing because you don't get double solid with almond dual. And you'll find that the different people um, have different values to their jobs. Niska will obviously pay a whole lot more for the jobs. We're talking four thousand um, for his jobs, but <clears throat> a lot of them are illegal. A lot of them are immoral. So even if you're doing an illegal job, that's okay. That's not really going to affect you. Um, but sometimes it'll say that it's an immoral job. And if it's an immoral job, any crew members that you have that are moral will get disgruntled. So they'll, they're going to be upset to complete that job. Again, it pays more, but it will make your people unhappy. And so just, just like in, uh, in real life, well, I, I don't know if he has any. Is it, is it Harkin that, that does the, all, all of his jobs are, are legal. <clears throat> They'll say legal up in the top corner, but it's an immoral job. So just because it's legal doesn't mean that it's not immoral. <clears throat> so in this case, it's a forced settler relocation. So you're picking up people who don't want to be moved and you're moving them. And because it's considered an immoral job, all your moral crew get disgruntled, whether they're working that job or not. And if you don't have any moral crew, then there's no impact. And so... Uh, you can have illegal jobs that aren't immoral. Uh, in this case, you're uh, doing corporate espionage. But then you do have illegal, immoral jobs as mm -hmm. well. So, And sometimes <clears throat> some of these um, illegal jobs will be getting contraband. And so you'll just want to make sure that's in your stash. So if it's not in your stash and the alliance... Um, comes up on you, then there's a chance you're going to get in trouble for it. But if it's in your stash, you're safe, you're good to go. Yeah, your staff, stash is like a little hidey area. Except if you meet the Alliance Cruiser, they tear your ship apart. Yep. Looking for, for stuff. And so fugitive and contraband in the stash will be taken. Yep. There's also some jobs that want you to uh, misbehave. So some of the jobs will say, okay, you go to this location, and when you're at the location, you just misbehave three times. And so what that does is there's a, there's a deck aimed to misbehave, and you'll take one of the misbehaves off the top, and you'll do what it says. So this one's a little job on the side. It's a profitable detour. So you would need the um, tech. So if you have tech, you would roll a one to six, and your attempt is botched, so you're done. You, you can't try to work that job again until your next turn. Or if you have a 7 plus, you take $1,500, but your attempt is still botched. So it's you wouldn't a, progress. It's a, it's a job on the side. So it, it gets a way to get you money, but you're not actually working towards the right. job. Or the other option <laughs> is just stay on target and you proceed, which is an automatic success. So you would say, okay, if that's the option you choose, okay, I'm going to stay on target. I've successfully completed that misbehave, and I'm going to draw my next one. So if it's botched, you don't get to draw your next one. You're done until your next turn. So this one is everything that's not nailed down. You load her up. It requires a transport. So if you don't have a transport, you cannot complete the top portion of this one. So, so my captain has the keyword transport. So, so he if, do you the top. Have, if you have transport, you load up to three contraband, and you proceed. So that's, that's a success. So that's why it's really good sometimes to have keywords in your crew. That'll help you with some of these You don't have to roll if you have <clears throat> the keyword. Right. And then the other one is idle hands are the devil's workshop. For each crew on jobs without gear, you load one contraband and you proceed. Oh, well, that one's a nice yeah. one. Yeah, so you that's a nice on one. both of them. You proceed on both and you get <clears throat> contraband, so you could put it in your stash, and you could potentially sell it to one of the people you're solid with. So there's other times you'll get contraband when you're com when you're working a job, but you want to make sure not to sell those because you need those contraband to complete your job. Norm did that on one occasion. He got a lot of money for selling contraband, so he sold all of his 
And then he didn't have the three he needed to complete a job he was working. So I don't think he ever got that job completed because he didn't have contraband. Yeah, you'll have to <clears throat> find another place to get the contraband. But sometimes you get paid more selling it to somebody than you yep. would completing the job. So again, to if whatever the um, requirement is to misbehave, as soon as you get those that number successful, that job's complete. You've completed that job. You're you're solid with that person, and your turn's done. There are times that you're going, and like this one, you either have to do a fight, and if you don't do well, you have to kill a crew member, which means they're removed from the game. Or, in this other one, you can try and talk your way out of it, but if you fail, then a warrant is issued. And if you become wanted during a job, you lose that job. It's, it's no longer active anymore. And if you were solid with that person, then you're no longer solid with that person. If you happen to get a warrant while working a job for Niska, you lose a crew member. So he, he doesn't just, mess around. He, he just... just not he just, like... <clears throat> It's reputation. It's all about maintaining reputation. And Harkin, because he's Alliance, you don't have to be working his job. If you become wanted working any job, you're going to lose uh, solid with him as well. Mm -hmm. And so those are your four actions. You take two of those. You can fly and then buy, or you can buy and then fly, or you can do a, a fly and then work, fly and then deal with something like that say i'm here where there's nothing there's no planets and i mosey into this one where it's bernadette it's a small planet you can't buy gear you can't hire anyone you can't do jobs it's just a planet you can just make work and yes. so as your second action you make work and you just get 200 bucks it's so, like you're doing a, a, a little side a job little errand for somebody on that mm -hmm. small planet and so which will will help you out as you're trying to get to where you're going and there might be just a small little planet in the space where you are. Yeah, so if you're, if you're moving <clears throat> five and it doesn't quite get you where you want to go, you might want to end in a space with a planet just so your second action could be make work for $200 because yep. you can't take the fly action twice. And the way to win the game <clears throat> varies. You're going to choose one of these, one of these cards, and they're going to have different ways to do it. Uh, Harkin's Folly... You've got three goals that you have to do in order. The first goal, become solid with Badger, Patient, Amendul, and Niska. So you got to get... That's a lot. Four of the five you got to get solid with. And then you, you would take a goal tile to show that you've completed the first goal. The second goal, you have to go to uh, Valentine and White Sun. And you have to uh, misbehave three times. And then do a tech roll. And if you don't have a lot of tech, you may want to build up your crew before you try doing that goal. And if you do complete that, goal three, you have to go to Ariel and White Sun, misbehave three times, and then do a negotiate roll. So you need to be high in tech and talk once you once you get there. So the base game <clears throat> has what, six? Um Let's see, one of these, this one's solo, so you have... Okay, five. You have five in, in the base game. And the, uh, the original game, when it originally came out, it recommended the card for you to start with. And that's what Norm did when he played years ago, and it was very difficult. You just have to keep accumulating lots and lots of money, you have to be able to misbehave, you have to roll... Um, for tech, for fighting, and for negotiation, depending on the goal. And it just took a lot of time. We were playing <clears throat> for four players, <clears throat> and every goal you have to misbehave a certain number of times. And then you have to do, uh, for the first one, you have to misbehave twice, and then you have to do a negotiate roll and get at least a six or, or higher to, to pass. Well, no, and, it, does it let okay yeah because if if you uh if you roll one to five it's just attempt botched but you so, have to pay money you have to pay money for all three of them yeah but the the problem is you have to misbehave twice and <clears throat> when you're learning the game you don't know what these are going to be like and so you're just like okay i i rolled the one where i either have to roll guns 
and possibly kill a crew member, or I have to roll talk and possibly get a warrant issued. And if I have a sniper rifle, I can I can proceed past this. We had no idea <laughs> what to expect from the, from this this deck, and so after our first try of misbehaving and being like, oh well, I've got two guns and no talk. I guess I'll try try that and hopefully get past it. But you know, we after failing <clears throat> once, it's like okay, I need to. I need to make sure that I find some of this, uh, some of this negotiate. So I'm, you're sailing around and, and doing those while you're trying to do jobs and get you know, money, and you lose money. I mean, so it's it was very challenging. Oh, it, yeah, it was not. I don't think it's a good starting one because once you complete that first one, then you got to do three misbehaves and a, a tech uh, challenge, and so. It says two hours on here. It did not take us two hours. Well, and the more players you have, it's going to take a little bit longer for the game. Um, but the designers did come back and say, you know what, here's another. Um, this this one's a better starting scenario. Yeah. I went online and printed it out, and uh, we, we played it. and It was a good start. It's, it's It was a good, good. introduction. I, I think I would have liked to have seen... Maybe on the the final goal, some misbehaving, maybe. So as you play through the goals, you're exposed to to more stuff. Because this was pretty much just uh, get solid with two contacts, have six thousand dollars, go somewhere and spend the six thousand. So we we started <clears throat> with this one with when me and Lisa played. We also started with this one with David, and uh, he found it to be a little bit too quick. Because you can accomplish these goals with just your captain if you yeah. wanted to. Now, the first time we, Norm and I played it, it took a couple hours for us. But again, I hadn't well, played the game, was getting getting comfortable with it. I didn't really know how to hire workers, how to get gear, things like that, working jobs. I didn't really work that many jobs the first time we played it. When we played with David, I went straight in knowing I, I already knew some stuff. I knew Niska paid more for his jobs. So I was taking his jobs more, getting money, and bef I mean, in no time at all, I had the six thousand dollars. You know, and, and David, <clears throat> he was wanting to go to these places and be like, you know, ooh, what 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 do I get in silver hold? And it's like, oh, I can get a, a sniper rifle. It's like, well, I'm going to buy that sniper rifle. And he you know, was determined he was going to find Wash, and he was going to hire Wash. So um, he was bound and determined. Now. I understand because when we played the first time, I did not leave the city until, she found until I found Kaylee. So, and well, and then I had to leave the city because I was just spending all my turns there and I, I left. And then the very next time Norm went into the city, he got her and he hired her and I killed him dead. So I kept waiting for her to get disgruntled so I could go take her and he never let her get disgruntled. It was very upsetting. So I think I think we pretty much covered it. There's some some other rules about uh, like the, the your crew can carry one gear and and some some things like that. But for the most part, oh, when you complete a job, you have to pay your crew. That's, oh, that's one thing that's we forgot. Right. So if you've got if I've got Jesse on my crew and I complete a job, I have to pay her two hundred dollars. So if my job pays out twelve hundred. The bank is keeping two hundred, and I'm only getting a thousand because I had to pay her for the job. So if if you've got six crew members and all of them take a cut, you need a you need a high paying job, otherwise you're not getting any money. Yeah. So uh, if you you can choose not to pay anybody, but they all become disgruntled. They, I mean, who wouldn't? They they don't like working for free. <clears throat> who and does? It, and it doesn't matter if they're the people that were working on the job. You have to pay your whole crew. Yep. So everybody gets a cut. So that's the that's that's the game. That's a quick over overview of the game um, and how to play it. So let's uh, let's talk about our likes and dislikes. Okay. So again, going into this game, I already knew Norm's opinion of it, so he wasn't thrilled with it. He said the first time he played it, the game didn't really match the show, and so he was disappointed in it. So. 
we never played it because I, I knew that he felt this way about the game. And I love the show so much, I didn't want to play a game that did not match it. And so it just stayed on our shelf. And then randomly, um, our program picked this one for one of our reviews. And when we played it, I loved it. I, lo I thought it was very um, in line with the show. I, I thought it fit very well. The theme, the jobs, the, the characters, interactions, all of it I thought felt really well. The misbehave. I mean, it was a lot of stuff that, that kind of tied to the show. There's so many Easter eggs in this game. So the designers really took their time and knew the show very, very well. So there's just there's just Easter eggs all over the place. So much. <clears throat> it seems like almost every bit of, of text comes from the show in, in, yep. in some way. Or the movie. So Or Serenity. So they knew what they were doing, which was quite impressive. The, 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 what, what they wanted to be the, the starting is the King of All Londinium, which is a, a line from the show. Uh, there's a, a thing where you can stumble upon a stranded ship that's just floating out there, and you can either stop and help everyone. You go full stop, but I think you get you get some some cargo, but you can't move any further. Mm -hmm. Or you can say a prayer and just sail on by, which is a line line from the show, but. It, you keep flying, but it's going to disgruntle all your moral crew mm -hmm. that that would want to <clears throat> to stop. So there's there's so much stuff that it's just. Oh, I I remember that, I remember that because of because uh, of the show. That's the line from the show, and so there's so many things like that. Yeah, it was it was enjoyable playing the game and catching these little um, Easter eggs. David is a huge fan of flavor text, so he was he was reading the flavor text and and matching it up with what he remembered so it was funny the first time we played it he didn't remember some of the the lines from the show and of course I'm a nerd I do Norm does as well and they challenged me on quite a few lines of the show and I had to prove to them that I was right and I was so that was enjoyable for me a lot so what <laughs> what don't you like nothing I like everything Interesting. I like, <clears throat> I like the Reavers ship. Now, I, I will say that there's not a whole lot of interaction with the Reavers. Um, so that that is one thing. I don't dislike that because they can really mess you up. Um, but there's not a lot of interaction. And, and again, with the Alliance, for the most part, you just keep flying, which is good because you, the, ro the, the goal of this game is to, to do jobs and interact with other people, hire crews, complete jobs. And so they're a nuisance. Um, so... Again, for the most part, when you're flying, you're clear. It's just occasionally you run across an Alliance ship or a Reaver. And so um, you don't interact with them a lot. There are cards that will say the person to your right move the Alliance ship or move the Reaver ship one step in whatever direction they choose. So they just move it. And so um, there's a little bit of movement for them around the board or you draw the card that puts them exactly where you are. So there's not a whole lot of interaction with them, which is okay. Um, that might be the only, that might be the only little downside and it's, it's just so nitpicky. Uh, <clears throat> you know that in the Blue Sun expansion, they add two more Reavers mm. to start out on the board. And that might be so, a bit more challenging. So that, that can cause some problems. I think there might be two little nitpicks that, that I have, uh, one is just kind of a, a a gameplay thing, a fiddly thing. The the fact that if you're doing a full burn, that every time you move into a space, you have to flip a card. Move into a space and flip a card. And most of them just say keep flying, and that's fine. But every now and then, it's just like, okay, I'm going to move this. And then you, you flip something. It's like, okay, now i got to read this. i got to make one of two decisions. I might make a skill check roll. And it's like, okay, I, I completed that. How many spaces did I move? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's like, oh, okay, I moved three, so I got two, <clears throat> two more, two more moves, and so, uh, you know, it, it might be, if we keep drawing and throwing it into the discard pile, it might be better to draw and just yeah, keep, that's true. keep it on the yeah. board, so you you know how many you're going, 
And you also have to keep track of when you're leaving alliance space and going into a border space that you flip the border space one and not the alliance one. Mm -hmm. So that's just a little bit of a fiddly thing. Uh, I don't know how you would how you would change that because you want the possibility of something random happening yeah. as you're moving from. And space it is to space. very annoying when you pay the fuel to do a full burn and you get a full stop your on your very first move. First cards. Oh, that's full, so frustrating. Full stop. And oh. And I will say, this is a, a, a nitpicky, tiny, tiny thing, but your fuel and your parts are tiny, tiny little slithers. That's because um, they, uh, they, they, I know, two they, of them take up the spot of a cargo. Two of them of take cargo. up a cargo spot, but these things are so fiddly, but they are a thick cardboard, so that's, that's a plus. They're just really, really tiny. Again, very tiny nitpick. It does not change the game for me at all. It's, it's just little. <clears throat> What's your second one? I'm sorry. Uh, the, the, the second thing is this uh, aim to misbehave deck. I, it's a little bit too random for me. Mm. Uh, I think the game would be better. I, I, was, I, was, I was thinking about... Because you know, when, you, when you go into misbehave, you're, you're doing a job. You don't know, okay, this one uses guns and, uh, and the talk. Well, I'm really good at tech. I probably wouldn't have taken this job if I right. known that it was going to be guns and talking because you know I'm I'm Kaylee I do I do gear so tech you know it I think it it could have been a little bit better if there were like different different decks of misbehave mm. that and they, <clears throat> they could be be different where it's like it's just because it's coming from the uh, the uh, negotiation pile. That it's not necessarily going to be negotiation is is the best option or something. You 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 could come up with some way of just randomizing them. Or uh, I had the thought of you know if you had a negotiate deck and a fight deck and a and a tech deck, and it says that you're going to misbehave three times. The job might say misbehave three times, but make a deck of two negotiate, two fight, and one tech. Mm. And then shuffle it up, and then you you flip over three, and you you have to complete three of them. Odds are it's going to be the negotiate and the uh, the fight, but you might draw that tech. Uh, it it just to me, I didn't like the idea of going on a job and not knowing, at least having a yeah. little idea of of what you were going to do because, uh, you know, <clears throat> in the show. They would know what the job was, and they would have a plan going in. Well, this it might is, go way wrong. This is misbehaving. This isn't necessarily a job. Yeah, but I mean, all, I know you have to jobs... do it to complete a job. But you know, when when Mouse starts a fight in a bar, he doesn't necessarily he knows know. He's, he knows he's fighting. Yeah, but he doesn't know what what they may throw into the fight. So you know, he's he's not going to be like, okay, I'm going to do a bar fight. Okay, Kaylee, do do some tech. Well, he did, you know, have Wash show himself and threaten to blow a crater in that planet. Norm's not a fan of random. It's... If I'm going to be doing a job, I'd like to have at least an idea of what the job entails. Fair. <clears throat> I do like the, the way that they... Uh, uh, have the two choices on here that you can try to try to pick one and the fact that if you get this particular thing and sometimes there's things down at the bottom that if it says wash proceed so if wash is in your crew you automatically proceed no issues boom done and, so. and that that's <clears throat> uh that's kind of random too yeah that 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 kind of that kind of bugs me a little bit i know a lot of them if you have a hacking rig then or you, fake ID. You, you can yeah. get past that security system. And a lot of them seem to have a, a security system that you need to try and get past. And so if you see a hacking rig in the discard pile somewhere, you might want to go and, and buy that hacking mm -hmm. rig just, just to have it. And so as you play, you're going to learn these things <coughs> that it's like, okay, having these green keywords is really good for mm -hmm. getting past the, the misbehaves. Otherwise, you're rolling a die and, and seeing what happens. One thing I really like is the playability. 
of the game, um, it's, it's going to be different every time. So you've got five scenarios to choose from, and I believe in, in some of the expansions you get more. Um, but you have different options there. You can be different um, captains. You can have different crews. So each time you're getting different um, gear, different tech, different jobs. So every game is going to be different. So you're, even if you want to play the exact same game, you can't because you don't know what you're going to be drawing as far as uh, when you're in the city and buying and things like that. So I do like how every game has its own unique spin to it. So let's score it. Okay. Am I going first? Sure. All right. So for the, the zero <clears throat> to seven for just gameplay, I'm going to go with six out of seven just because of just how random that that misbehave is uh, you have to be prepared at the get-go you just can't wildly mis misbehave because you never know what's going to come up i always wildly misbehave and uh you know the the fiddliness of the the flipping the the decks you know there's this is this is very much just a very simple kind of like a pick up and del deliver game you know a lot of these jobs are picking up from one place and going someplace else or going someplace and doing something so it's very much you know i'm going to go here and pick up two cargo and then i'm going to sail over here and i'm going to drop the two cargo so uh you know the the rules aren't that aren't that difficult the basic gameplay loop that that you're playing is pretty simple I'll, I'll give it a six out of seven. You bring up some fair points. So I can't be, I can't, I can't in good conscience give it a seven just because I love everything Firefly. I want to, I want to really bad, but that wouldn't be fair. So I, I as well will give it a six pretty much for the same reasons Norm gives. Um, the randomness of the misbehaved deck. I like the misbehaved deck. But I did not, I don't seem to pass it very often because I don't have the requirements um, for it or the die roll is not strong enough. So um, I, I will dock it for that, but I, I, I like all of the pieces. I think they work well together. Okay. Wow factor. All right. The wow factor, the zero to three to bring it up to the 10 point scale. I'm going first. <clears throat> You're going to go first. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to give it a two. Two. So I'll give it an eight. eight. Um, this is my favorite game right now. So this is the one I want to bring to the table and play. Um, so it's a 2.5, maybe it's, it's close to a three. So I think if anyone were to say, let's play Firefly, I would jump right in. I would recommend it. David enjoyed it, so that's a game we'll have to play with him. I want to show some of our friends and play with them. Um, so I, I could give it a three very, very easily. So you're saying eight or eight or nine out of ten? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I can't, I can't stick with one. <clears throat> My wow factor comes with a condition. I would say. You're not a Firefly fan. I would give it a one. This this would be okay. I can't I can't say what I would give it. This would be a seven out of ten game, if it didn't have Firefly on it. If if it was just random space game, and we have better space games. I will say that. But again, it's it's Firefly. Yeah, <clears throat> because of the Firefly. If you enjoy the the easter eggs that you find if you're like playing and you're like like recognizing that it's like oh wow this guy's jobs kind of fit the jobs that that they do in the mm -hmm. show you know not every every uh contact has the same types of jobs you know they're, they skew one way or another mm -hmm. and you know it's there there's so much firefly in this that like I would give it a two out of the three, keep making this uh this game an eight. But if you're not into Firefly, I would say that it's a seven. It's a solid pick up, deliver, do job kind of game. And if you're not into Firefly, what 
Why? Yeah, what's what's going on? What's wrong? So if you haven't seen Firefly, just stop. Stop right now. Go watch Firefly and then come back. We'll wait. So playing with <clears throat> playing with Lisa and and my my son, I I enjoyed I enjoyed this game. It was much better than when we were trying to learn the game with the King of All Londinium. Uh, that was not that was not a fun fun time. So I love this game. It's not a like for me. It's a love. It's it's um, one it's one that I am itching itching to play. So that brings the question: Are we going to keep it? Are we going to keep this game? I don't think I don't think we're going to. We're, we're not going to keep, keep this. this game. I, but we've talked about it, and we're we're not keeping it. But uh, but yeah, as that's a, we've that's, got a consolation though. That's really just because this thing came in the mail <clears throat> just a couple <laughs> days ago. <clears throat> so yeah, we're not. We're not keeping this game. We got this one. This is the the Firefly 10th anniversary. They did the Kickstarter. Am I not sitting on anything? Am I? No, I moved it. They they did a, a Kickstarter where this box contains everything ever printed for the game. So, and can I just backtrack? First player marker. It's, it's I mean, like of course. Source. It recommends that you get a real plastic one. And we we have to get David to bring us one because he stole all of our dinosaurs. So after playing this game, uh, I had the Blue Sun expansion and the Pirates of Bounty Hunters, and I opened them up to make sure that all the pieces were there. But uh, looking online to, for all <clears> the <throat> all this other stuff, there's ships that have... Uh, Differences that make the ships a little bit different. Yeah, uh, they're not all, necessarily fireflies. All, all the all the expansions, they were, they were hard to to get, and on the secondary market, it was really cheaper to just pick this up. Uh, I passed on this on the Kickstarter because uh, it it was two hundred and twenty dollars for for the whole thing, and with my initial uh, experience with it. The fact that it was Firefly was tempting, but the fact that we had such a bad time with it the first time I played it, I didn't want to spend the, the 220 So I, I actually practiced some shelf control there. That's the name of the show. But I was able to see uh, on uh, the online retail store Miniature Market, not, not a sponsor, they have some copies of this that I think they got through the, the Kickstarter. And it, they're selling it for the 220 like it was there. And uh, as a little tip, if you sign up for their, their newsletter, they'll send you a code for 10% off. And so this, this came out, uh, it was free, free shipping. And it came out to 212 after tax, I think. So uh, it's not a, not a bad way to get it. But I'm sure they have a limited stock of whatever they got at the... Uh, at the Kickstarter. And so this has all the expansions, all the promo cards, new stuff that they came out with just for the uh, expansion. It's got the big damn heroes. And so we're going to we're going to try try this and you'll you'll probably have a video in the future where we we talk about what we think of uh, the 10th anniversary edition, but because of that <clears throat> we we don't we don't need this one, and we don't need the. And we don't um, need the blue expansions. sun and the expansions, and or so. the big money. That's one so. thing Norm got as well was big money. So this is the size of the money in the standard game, but the big money is probably big money is more like yeah, this. It's more like this, that size, so or, or even bigger. Yeah. And so so, but the big money comes in the big box as well. That's one thing I, I think that the big box. It would have been nice to have the small money, as well. Yeah. Just because, like on on this table, that big money is going to take up so much yep. space. But I don't. We'll we'll see how it how it plays out. And, and in the sure big we'll, box, we'll you that. don't get the board because of the expansions. Give you additional boards to put on each side of this one. You don't get a board in the big box. You get a mat that you just roll out, roll, rolls and it's out and got everything. everything on it. So that's nice. Saved a little bit of weight on this huge box. So we'll we'll see we'll see how we how we like that. I can probably tell you now how we'll like it. 
don't know. It adds a, it adds a lot of stuff. And looking through the rule book, it adds a lot of a lot of rules, but a lot of thematic rules, things that just make sense in the Firefly universe. So, so we've been needing to get this video out so we can pack this game up and make room for our new beautiful invite David over and do the the whole whole verse. No power in the verse. So. Anyway, so that's Firefly. We're going to pack this up and go play the new one. What do you uh, what do you think of Firefly? So let us know. Thanks for following along. Like and subscribe. Leave us a comment of your thoughts. Um, we've got a few more of the eight randoms to go through. And I think we have five five more. Really? I we've only so. done three? I Interesting. I think we've done three. Well, we've, we've got more to do. So uh, stick around while we go through those. And until then, keep flying. Bye. Bye.